for those in attendance and USC fans watching around the world. This is the moment you all truly have been waiting for. It is time! Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today is the inaugural episode of our new series, UFC Rankings Then and Now. In this epic series, we're going to compare the current UFC roster to the first ever ranked fighters in the promotion. This first episode will compare the biggest, baddest men on the planet to the elite of the UFC in 2013. We have Francis Ngannou vs. Prime Kane Velasquez, Fabrizio Verdun vs. The Black Beast Derek Lewis, so stay tuned to have your say on which era of fighters is better. Make sure you vote in the comments below on your choices. Now, without any hesitation, let's work our way down from number five. Number five, Frank Mir versus Alexander Volkov. We start the list off with two vastly experienced fighters at different stages of their careers. Despite his record, Frank Mir is an MMA legend, and you probably know him for his rivalry with WWE superstar Brock Lesnar. The vast majority of his losses came only after the 2013 first ever rankings came out, so we're gonna have to ignore that. The BJJ black belt holds the record for most submissions in UFC heavyweight history and is a two-time UFC heavyweight champion. However, he claimed those championships five years prior to the rankings being introduced. And by the time he was 34 in 2013, he had a record of 16 and six, coming off of a loss to Junior Dos Santos, who we will get to later on in the video at number one so stay tuned. Prior to that loss, Mir was on a three-fight win streak, including wins over fellow legends like Mirko Krokop and Big Nam. Overall, Mir was not in his prime yet, still performing at the highest level against elite competition. Is it enough to beat out Volkov in our rankings? The Russian giant is 6'7 and really lives up to his Drago nickname when you see him in the cage. At the time of this video, Alexander has a 33-9 record, being 7-3 in the UFC. The three losses come into Cyril Gain, Curtis Blades, and Derek Lewis, who are both featured in this video. Volkov is a former Bellator and M1 champion, but his victories in the Octagon don't compare to Mears, with his biggest victories being for Doom and Overeem, who are on a steep decline. Who do you think should take the number five spot in our rankings? Make sure to leave a comment. For us, it's one of the hardest decisions on the list, but it has to be Frank Mir. His resume and form at the time was more impressive than Volkov's is currently, but the Russian still has time to best the American's achievements. He's only 32. Number four, Antonio Silva versus Curtis Blades. Bigfoot Silva and Razor Blades have completely different styles of fighting, the kickboxer and the wrestler. For Bigfoot, the story is very similar to Frank Mir. At the time of the rankings, he had a record of 18 and four. In the 10 fights he had after the release of the rankings, he racked up a shocking one and nine record. As hard as that is to overlook, we're gonna have to try. In February, 2013, Bigfoot had two wins against Travis Brown and Alistair Overeem. He had only lost to the elite during his stint with Strike Force in the UFC, all of whom will be discussed in this video. His crown jewel is his victory over one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Fedor Emelianenko. Silva would always put on entertaining fights, but had a very glaring weakness in the grappling department. That's why despite being elite, he never managed to touch gold in a major MMA organization. Curtis Blades has the opposite problem. His wrestling is probably the best in the current heavyweight division, but he struggles against big power punchers. He has only ever lost to two men in his 14 and three career, champion Francis Ngannou and number two, Derek Lewis, both powerful strikers. In his time with the UFC, Curtis has managed to get impressive wins over the likes of the aforementioned Alexander Volkov, Junior Dos Santos, Alistair Overeem, and Alexei Olenek. Fans don't find his style entertaining, but it is certainly effective. Blades returns against the elite kickboxer from Suriname, Jarzinho Rosenstrike, at UFC 266. A victory there would put him right back in the title picture. Picking between these two men is quite difficult. Silva's kickboxing and Blade's wrestling combined would probably make one of the most feared heavyweights on the planet. But we find that Curtis Blades is overall a better fighter than Silva was, implementing his game plan effectively against the best of his division. Who do you think should take the number four slot in the rankings? Make sure to vote. Number three, Daniel Cormier versus Cyril Gaon. 
On the surface, this seems like a no-brainer. DC was a 2-8 world champion and fought at the very top until the end of his career, while Gon is just an up-and-coming undefeated prospect with just two victories over ranked fighters at the time of writing. However, in 2013, DC was in a very similar position to Gon, a couple of impressive wins with an 11-0 record. Cormier is an elite wrestler and despite his height disadvantage over other heavyweights, he has managed to establish himself as one of the all-time greats. At the time of the inaugural rankings, DC has managed to establish himself as a star after winning the Strike Force Grand Prix and defeated household names such as previous entry Antonio Silva and Josh Barnett. After Strike Force merged with UFC, the promotion's champion earned a number three ranking. Cyril Bongaman Gan is a 31-year-old bright prospect in the heavyweight division. Much unlike DC, Gan is a physical specimen, standing at six foot four and shredded. Cyril has a kickboxing background, but his ground game is surprisingly good. His first two UFC wins were via submission, showing his well-roundedness. He has an undefeated record of 9-0. His biggest wins are over Alexander Volkov, Jarzinho Rosenstrike, and a washed JDS. He is scheduled to face Derek Lewis in the main event of UFC 265 for a shot at the interim heavyweight title, which is a very divisive topic since it's only been four months since Ngannou became the champ, and they are already making an interim belt. Do you agree with Dana's decision to book this fight? Let us know in the comments below. Despite Gan's potential, DC had clearly achieved more in 2013 than Gan currently has, so the Louisiana native takes the number three spot for us. Number two, Fabrizio Verdun versus Derek Lewis. Yet another contrast of styles here at number two, the BJJ specialist for Doom and the power puncher Derek Lewis. The Brazilian is a legend in the sport of MMA, managing to capture the UFC heavyweight title in 2015 and beating legends such as Cain Velasquez, Big Nog, Bigfoot Silva, Fedor Emelianenko, Gabriel Gonzaga, with those last three being by the time the UFC rolled out the 2013 rankings. At that time, he was coming off back-to-back -back wins over Roy Nelson and Mike Russo, establishing himself in the title picture. His losses only came against elite competition in his record of 16, 5, and 1. The Black Beast, on the other hand, is currently 25 and 7, heading into an interim title clash against Gon in August. He earned the shot with an astounding KO over Curtis Blades, extending his current winning streak to four. His balls might be hot, but his resume is even hotter. The aforementioned Blades, Volkov, Roy Nelson, and the current champion, Nganu, have all lost to the scary knockout artist. Despite the quality of his wins, Lewis has at times struggled against lower quality of opposition, such as Ivanov and Latifi, despite claiming victories. A very difficult decision to make, so we're curious as to who you would pick at the number two slot. We are going with Lewis, but it's a very close one. Number one, Junior Dos Santos versus Stipe Miocic. We move on to the number one spot with men who are one and one in the octagon against each other. JDS beat Stipe in a decision win in 2014, and Stipe avenged that loss with a first round knockout of the Brazilian in his second title defense in 2017. Current Stipe has never faced 2013 JDS, however, and that's why we're breaking down who is the better fighter. In 2013, Sagano was 15-2 coming off a defeat versus Cain Velasquez in their title rematch at UFC 155. When you hear the list of names Junior beat prior to that, you'll be shocked by the amount of killers on it. Frank Mir, Cain Velasquez in their first bout, Shane Carwin, Roy Nelson, Gabriel Gonzaga, Mirko Krokop, Stefan Struve, Fabrizio Verdun. The good guy of MMA, the man that went on Dancing with the Stars, really made these men feel like they didn't belong in there with him. Not much of a kicker, the Brazilian depended on his excellent boxing to do the work for him with his speed, power, and precision, allowing him to tear through the heavyweight division. He should really be considered one of the goats of the division, despite the steep decline at the end of his UFC career, where he faced nothing but killers. Stipe is already considered as the goat of the heavyweight division by Dana White, and there's a good reason for it. He has two wins against DC, as well as victories over JDS, Nganu, Overeem, Verdun, Arlovsky, Hunt, Maldonado, Gonzaga, and Nelson. 
His star-studded resume is coupled with the record of having the most title fight wins in heavyweight history. Like JDS, he's one of the good guys of MMA, having a career as a firefighter as well as a cage fighter. Stipe's last fight was the rematch with Francis, where he didn't look too great and seemed severely undersized. No plans yet for a comeback fight for him, but Dana has mentioned that if John Jones is out of the picture, it's likely Stipe will get the winner of Ngannou Lewis. So in terms of who had the better career, it's undoubtedly Stipe, but comparing 37-year-old Miocic to the prime 29-year-old Dos Santos, we have to go with the Brazilian for our number one contender spot. Champion round, Cain Velasquez versus Francis Ngannou. We have made it to the cream of the crop, the champions. Like in our previous century, these men have faced each other before, and it was in the final fight of Kane's career. Ngano brutally KO'd the Mexican legend inside 30 seconds. That, however, is irrelevant when we were talking about the prime C-level Kane of 2013. The AKA star was 11-1 when the rankings came out, having avenged his loss to Junior Dos Santos in his previous bout. He also held victories against the likes of Bigfoot Silva, Brock Lesnar, Big Nog, Ben Rothwell, and Czech Congo. On the surface, the resume doesn't seem as good as JDS's and Stipe's, but the way he dominated his opponents was a sight to behold. His level of cardio and wrestling was unprecedented in the heavyweight division. He had some of the most vicious ground and pound, a ridiculous top game, despite not being a BJJ ace. Injuries hindered the Mexican's career, and we only saw him fight 17 times, with lots of what-if matchups like the Stipe fight still talked about to this day. Francis got to experience the Stipe fight twice, convincingly losing the first fight and dominating the rematch at UFC 260. All of the Predators' wins in the Octagon have come via KO, TKO, with the exception of a Kimura win over Anthony Hamilton in 2016. Francis has other notable wins such as Overeem, Blades, JDS, Jarzinho, and the aforementioned Cain Velasquez. Ngannou showed a lot of development in the last Stipe fight, incorporating leg kicks into his arsenal and showing exceptional takedown defense. Francis has improved upon his weaknesses and looks like one of the most complete fighters on the roster currently. We were really torn on this decision, but Kane takes the championship spot. If Francis has a similar performance to the Stipe matchup in his next fight against the winner of Lewis vs. Gone, he will undoubtedly have this spot on this list. We just have to make sure that it wasn't a one-off. So guys, the final ranking looks like this. Our champion, Cain Velasquez. Number one, Junior Dos Santos. Two, Derek Lewis. Three, Daniel Cormier. Four, Curtis Blades. And five, Frank Mir. Two from our current rankings and four from 2013. Let us know in the comments whether you agree with our picks and tell us if you wanna see videos like this for the rest of the divisions. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and hit subscribe. Till next time.